here we have a case study made by two organizations, which are Binario Etico, which I represent, and Sensei, which is represented by Alessandro. And it is about making a, an application working on an open stack, and in particular, a Dockerized application working on uh, COE on OpenStack. The agenda is, which, uh, you know, a, bit, a little bit introduction of our organizations and why we decided to join to join our efforts to make this. So, what are our reason to automate our infrastructure? We will show you the setting that we came up to, and this setting is using Kubernetes on OpenStack. So, we will show you. Um, um, briefly how, how Kubernetes work on our setting and we, we will leave space for the case study for the demo itself because that's, that's the real object of this talk. So now a quick introduction. First Sensei. Hi everyone. So in Sensei uh, we do of course development for an enterprise environment. Uh, in our project uh, we promote agile and DevOps practice. Uh, we have a partnership with WSO2 and recently we started a new partnership with Docker and experimented Docker for internal use. Um, so we had a very good result in the developer environment. So we decided to make a step forward um, to understand how to use all of this in production. And about us? Binario Etico, we deal with infrastructure, so we are pretty complementary with, with Sensei. We are focused on OpenStack and we offer infrastructures and support. And typically we work with, we work with company that develop, like Sensei, and so we, we want to, to control and automate um, the infrastructure level and in particular we want to provide support for orchestrating containers. So. This marriage uh, happened also because we both belong to Rete Italiana Open Source, which, which is um, a business network focusing on open source technologies. So one more reason to work together. And basically we, we started to collaborate to integrate the full stack from, from the source code down to the virtual machine. And Sensei provides Docker images, so arrives till the point of, you know, preparing the artifacts. B, B, Binario Etico provides the, the OpenStack infrastructure and we meet in between on Kubernetes. So what are our reasons from Sensei perspective? Well, uh, for sure, uh, change the development workflow so that we can create uh, and deploy new, new artifacts such as Docker images to be uh, uploaded into a private registry so that developers can take these images and apply some configuration so that they can build uh, additionally artifacts. In this way, the configuration management is take part of the build. Artifact can be uh, deployed, destroyed, and deployed again. In case of any configuration change, uh, this process actually triggers uh, the build of a new artifact. And a very good reason of everything is that uh, any Dockerized project, in any Dockerized project, everything is under version control. And this basically uh, enables build automation and source to image that <coughs> in order to address your continuous integration requirement, but also continuous development and quality assurance task. One for all, all of this improve the collaboration across users, teams, and projects. And then you have full application lifecycle control from dev to production. And as I said, from our perspective, we want to deploy customers build artifacts, Docker images, so that having that um, running on Kubernetes and on OpenStack, we can control both horizontal and vertical scaling in very convenient way. 
we can monitor the single application components instead of monitoring one monolith application and we gain in stability and we can offer stability and availability to our customers and and possibly if the customer wants we can use multi cloud hybrid clouds multiple data centers no problem it's so no lock in so in the infrastructure can be changed quite easily okay so our setting again i said we um, we met we we met in kubernetes in between so what we've done is very very easily we we created the virtual machines that were needed for the kubernetes cluster to work we configured the nodes of the cluster and then we deployed the docker images on top of kubernetes and using using the power of kubernetes we we you know we can keep up with the production which means that we have a single point of management all metrics uh, get real time central log aggregation and in general if we, if you got a problem you can fast react to problem so kubernetes um you know it's this um distributed orchestration engine for containers and it is made of pods the pod is a, um, is a set of containers that share a namespace in our case we have one container per pod in this use case pods that are then scheduled to the actual nodes um, as a unit and you have the concept of service which is how pods can communicate between them on the same node and intra nodes that's the architecture of kubernetes and it is you know very convenient to make replication load balancing it's all done via very nice dashboard and and shell so let's go now to the case study itself so um, before going through the details of the case study i give you a brief very brief introduction about wso2 um, wso2 platform is based on java uh, open source mono licensing is actually a suite of products to address different architectural requirements main areas that the platform covers are api management integration identity and access management analytics and, and iot so uh, you can use one or more product uh, they can be installed on their own or integrated they can be easily integrated um, also you can install it on premises or use the public cloud of wsu2 we are going to use two distinct products in our case study. The first one is the enterprise service bus that enables communication among various applications. So instead of having to make each of your application communicate directly with each other, uh, simply each of your application communicate with a bus and the bus which handles transforming and routing messages to the expected destination. Uh, so the enterprise service bus supports uh, uh, enterprise integration partners as well. The second product is the data analytics server that is in one solution. Uh, it's a one solution uh, basically with the ability to build systems and application to collect data from different sources and analyze both real-time persistent data. And the result that of your analysis can be communicated externally in a variety of different interfaces. So going through the details of this case study, uh, we're gonna use Twitter as um, our, say, as a data provider. And basically the ESB uh, connect to Twitter uh, through the streaming API. The ESB is responsible to download a stream of tweet and filter by uh, the information we require and publish some event uh, over TCP against the data analytics server. On the data analytics server side, uh, those uh, events are collected and we run some uh, real-time analysis in order to spot some insights, some stats basically. And those stats are then communicated uh, against the internal dashboard of the analytics server. Mm -hmm. 
So from Kubernetes deployment perspective, uh, well, okay, this is a cluster Kubernetes master, and we're gonna have one service and one pod for each, let's say, WSO2 product. Uh, for this case study, the tools, the application, are supposed to be standalone. So in, in this way, the replica set will be, will be just one. So regarding a demo, uh, the application side tool review, here uh, in this picture, you can see the deployment workflow. So basically, the wrist. Okay. Uh, this is actually light blue boxes, okay, at the bottom. They are artifacts that WSE2 provide, except Oracle JDK, of course. These artifacts you can use uh, as it is or customize according to your needs. So together, you, the application artifacts that, you, that is actually your business logic application, then you can build the Docker image. And this Docker image is basically uploaded to a private registry. And finally, uh, you can run the deploy of the Kubernetes artifacts reading from the private registry. About the infrastructure side tools that we use for the demo, basically we deployed Kubernetes on OpenStack using these three tools. Installing Kubernetes can be quite tough, quite hard. We, lately, these tools arrived that make things a bit easier. So Cube ADM, Ansible is used for the, for the orchestration of the whole thing. So if you need to raise the nodes, uh, of the tenant, you use Ansible. If you need to configure the nodes, use Ansible, and then, um, and then use WeaveNet to make containers um, communicate with one another. So there is a long procedure. We don't have time to show that. Uh, I mean, you, you configure and launch the master and the nodes. Then you set up the nodes using kubeadm, and then you, there are some add-ons that we wanted to. Uh, to add to Kubernetes to have, um, to have, for example, the statistics of of the load balance of the loads of the nodes, uh, which are useful uh, when you have to see if there are problems, and they they can help us to verify that Kubernetes is doing its job, which is to balance the load among nodes. And finally, you need um, a local kube, kube CDL configuration within. Uh, within Kubernetes to set the proxy. Okay, quick step back. Uh, in our demo, uh, we bypass step one and step two because we don't have enough time to do it. So just deploy the Kubernetes artifact. So every Docker image is, is, is already there. So we don't need to, to build anything, okay? So live show. So what are you going to see in this demo? Uh, so basically, we'll deploy the Kubernetes artifacts, so the, the application. Uh, then we'll go through the uh, analytics dashboard um, uh, in order to make you able to see the different graphs that we, we have set up. Uh, and finally, we're going to produce some, some failures to the uh, cluster so that we can see how the Kubernetes uh, react and manage this uh, strange situation. We're going to, let's say, simulate two kinds of failures. The first one is the drop uh, a pod, and the second one is drop the wall node. So let's move to the uh, dashboard. Okay, this is the Kubernetes dashboard that you may already know. So here we have the information about the cluster, namespace, and nodes. Regarding the nodes, we have three distinct nodes, OpenStack day one, two, uh, and three. The default namespace is the namespace that uh, we use to uh, deploy our application and our pod. And here you can see that uh, we don't have anything deployed inside deployments and pod as well. Hmm. 
In terms of configuration, we're going to have two distinct YAML files, one for the ESB and one for the DAS, uh, to just deploy uh, one service and deployment. So for instance, we have um, Sorry. <laughs> so in this case, we have the DAS. Here, there is the details of the service. And then we have the details about the deployment here, where there is uh, a configuration about our replicas and the Docker images, and few other information like liveness prod and readiness prod. So I, I'm going to skip the, the, the second file because they are quite similar. So uh, let's create uh, our pods. First create the, the first pod about the DAS. So service and both service and deployment are created. Then the ESB. So as you can see, um, both pods looks are already running, but actually they are not ready yet. Uh, this means uh, that the application uh, didn't start completely, so it's still in the process to be completed. So the same state is available uh, from, from the dashboard. So here we have deployments are already uh, looks OK. Regarding the pod, the dust pod looks OK, while the ESB is still in process to start. Then we are our services. Let's check. Okay, now they look both ready. But I skip one important note. So basically, if you want, if you have a Twitter account, you can take part of this demo directly. Sorry, you, you noted, yeah? <laughs> so basically, what we are going to filter from stream, from the data stream from Twitter is basically uh, tweet written in English using one or more of the following keywords. So you can tweet uh, using one of those uh, keywords, and then you can take part of the demo. So, okay, as you can see, the DAS has been assigned to OpenStack 1, and the ESB has been created to OpenStack Day 3. So let's go. Let's um, log in into the dashboard. So basically, what we what you can see are five distinct graphs. At the bottom, you can see just. Um, basically the tweet stream and the top the popular hashtag in the last five minutes consider that according to this custom configuration uh, an hashtag is uh, is displayed in this in this graph if has been used at least five times in the last five minutes uh, on the right you can see the tweet number in the last 10 seconds. And here in the middle, the sentiment analysis. The so sentiment analysis refers to, uh, to the process of determining... Can you hear me? Yeah. Uh, refers to the process uh, to determine whether a piece of writing is positive, negative, or, or neutral. And here we have on the right the same, basically another perspective of the same analysis, so the sentiment grouped by um, category. So 
I don't know if you are tweeting right now, but I can <laughs> run. There, there's a negative percentage, which is surprising. <laughs> and the positive is so small. <laughs> what, what did you guys say? Are you saying something bad? <laughs> We try, we try now to tweet our from here directly. Of course, we don't have many tweets, but we will. We, we can maybe change the keywords and see some more serious stuff going on, maybe at the end of the demo. Okay, I don't have connection to my mobile. <laughs> okay, well, I mean, they, 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 have done, they have done it, so it's fair enough. Okay, that's me, Alessandro Bevilini. Me again. Okay, so um, <clears throat> let's try uh, something different. So we can produce some failure right now. Uh, so let's switch back. Uh, to the dashboard of Kubernetes. And so let's try, for instance, to uh, go to the pod and, okay, and delete. So the previous pod is basically terminated and the Kubernetes uh, cluster already creating a new one. And this time, uh, the new pod has been created to uh, OpenStack day number three. And this is completely automatic um, and decided by Kubernetes according their, I guess, the resource usage of the cluster in terms of CPU and memory. And probably in terms of network, uh, I guess. So now, uh, what we can try is to uh, Well, let's wait for the, the DAS okay, to be available again, and then we can try to, uh, to drop the whole node. Okay? Okay. So I can give you the control. Just, okay. So. Okay, the part is, is, is up. So we can show that it is it is still working. Mm -hmm. Ah, you mean the, the analytics dashboard? Yes, just analytics dashboard. Yeah, okay, it is still working. <laughs> Okay, everything, is, everything up is up again, so we can switch. So we, we failed the pod, and it was able to, to recover. Now let's fail the node. Um, what is the node that we want to fail? Number three? Yeah, it's the only one that we can choose. Okay. Okay, and you can just, you know, go down. Here, you know, open sack day three. That's it. And we shut off the instance. And so, so, so the, the, the instance went down. It is, it is in the process of going down. And in some seconds, it will be shut off. And, and Kubernetes will uh, realize that the, the node is, is down now. Nodes. 
OpenStack day three is still there. Kubernetes needs some time to, to do this. And okay, now it, it is not it's not there anymore. So what 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 Kubernetes is doing now is to try to, you know, migrate these pods on other nodes in order to have a good balance uh, on on the two remaining nodes. And it takes some time to do that. And after this time, node node one and node two, you see there. And one once this is done, we will be able to use we will be able to show that the dashboard is still working. Okay. It's around one minute. Okay, so maybe, maybe we can we can drive to Yeah, we, we can, you know, go to the lesson learned. And then we come back here when, when it is done. Yeah. So, <clears throat> so we have seen how application development and IT infrastructure can collaborate within each other profitably, integrating the full stack from source code to virtual machines. And we have seen that thanks to Docker's containers, we can keep the application part completely decoupled from the infrastructure part. Um, and this means that we can easily change the infrastructure part if we want, so not causing any lock-in to customers. Uh, we've seen that OpenStack proved excellent for, for Kubernetes orchestration, and uh, this way we can have monitoring and management of a single application uh, very neat and effective. So we are really at the end of the of the speech. Let's see if the nodes are recovered. <laughs> okay, now they're they're they are done, and uh, and the dashboard is, is it is still there. So another another thing we can do is start the instance again so that it will be part of the cluster again. And in the meanwhile, we can maybe, maybe uh, you know, show maybe different keywords. No. I don't think we have enough time yeah. to do it. Okay. Uh, yeah, because, well, we wanted to show some more interesting keywords, like Donald Trump, uh, which, you know, or maybe Bergoglio, I don't know. <laughs> Okay, so this is pretty much all. Thank you.